Okay, welcome back. In the last lesson, we talked about concatenation. In this lesson, we are going to talk about not concatenation. We are actually going to look at a better way to print variables to our console instead of using alert. So up until now, we have been saying alert, test. And then when we refresh our page, it just annoys us with this. And every time we hit refresh, it annoys us with this. And you know, at first when you're starting JavaScript, that's eh, not a big deal, but you don't really see this functionality in the wild. People don't use alerts too often anymore unless it's like, oh, you started to write a post and then you hit the back button. Are you sure? Because like, do you really want to leave? And that's a totally different thing, actually. It just sort of looks the same. So in here, what we want to do is just log something to our console in here. And so whatever JavaScript re we write in here, anything, it could be literally anything. We just want to put it into the console so that we can see what it is. And this is a very very useful way of debugging your JavaScript. So let's go ahead and create a variable. And I'm going to put my name is Caleb Tallinn and var profession. I am a teacher by trade. Eh, that's actually not entirely true because I'm also a web developer. So teacher and web developer. And let's get rid of this alert. And let's say you just have to put on your imagination hat here for a second. But let's say we have 10,000 lines of JavaScript and we don't know what the value of name currently is. And so we have a ton of code. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pretend that it's way up here somewhere and we can't really access it easily, but we want to see what it is. So yes, we could do alert name. And when I go over here, it'll tell me what it is, but that's annoying. And if you happen to be in a loop, we'll talk about loops later, this could execute for a hundred, a thousand iterations, it'll just keep alerting you just over and over and over and over and over. Your browser might even crash from it. Who knows? That's not a good way to live your life. A better way to live your life is, let's go in here and let's say console.log and then we could just put anything we want in here. So let's say name and then a comma and let's put the name variable in here. So let's actually put name colon. And so you can see this is a string and this is a variable. Let's go ahead and refresh our page here. And I'm gonna to have to make that a little smaller, I think, yep. So we can see name, Caleb Tallinn, and it executes on line 29 of the file called 60 underscore console underscore log dot HTML. And if I click it, it'll tell me exactly where this is being executed. So this is a great way to debug your code. In fact, this is actually just a really good way of sort of figuring out what's going on in code in general. So let's go ahead and type profession in here. And again, I just added a comma. And we can see in here, it says my name is Caleb Tallinn and teacher and web developer is my profession. So moving forward, we are probably going to use console log a lot more often than we're going to use alert. Alert is just a little obnoxious and it sucks sort of having to click into it all the time. And it's like, hey, here's an alert. Okay, here's another alert. Click okay. Here's another alert. Click okay. And just, it gets a little monotonous, a little too much, especially as you start writing more and more code. And the bright side about this is when you're writing code that goes on a live website, it's only going to show up in your console. So if I get rid of this console here and I just refresh, nothing happens, or at least it looks like nothing's happening. But if I right click inspect, go into my console, this continues to happen. And so really only a developer is ever going to see this. And so if you're testing something out in production on a live website, you can always use this method. Now there's a couple other ones you can use too. So we could do console.warn. Warning, stranger danger. That went to lowercase and I want uppercase. Aha, this one goes yellow. Warning, stranger danger. And we could also do console, let's make that lowercase, console dot error, error, and we'll just paste that over and over again. And because these are all on the new lines, they don't need a semicolon, but let's throw it in there anyways. And now we're going to see a warning, a regular console log, and an error. And there it is. We have warning, stranger danger. My name is Caleb Tallinn. I'm a teacher, a web developer, and also error, 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 error and also the respective lines that they're all taking place on line 28, line 29, and line 30. 
So that's a better way to live your JavaScript life is to use console log. You're not going to use console war or console error too often. Generally, we just use console log. Now, if you come from another programming language, this is very similar to the print function. So if you use uh, Python, for example, this is like print. If you come from a PHP background, it's like saying echo something. And the JavaScript way is simply da, 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 console.log. So again, moving forward, we are going to be using console log a lot more. So you're going to want to make sure you know how to open up that console in your page. Again, that's just right click inspect. It'll generally open up your elements first and you'll just have to click console. Sometimes you have to go in here and click console depending on how big your screen is. Uh, but there's always a console tab in there and you can always just open that up and see what the code is doing if it's giving you any warnings, logs or errors.